Welcome back to another candid session of Drone Business Strategy Magazine, where we seamlessly blend straight up, street smart strategies with scholarly insights to empower and inspire your professional aerial ambitions. And now, here's our navigator, business strategist, and commercial drone pilot, Tony Marino. How are you doing? Super glad to see you today. Three things today, three things, all right? A streamlined sales and onboarding process and risk mitigation all in one session. Plus, in a few moments, I'm gonna walk you through the communication document we use to help fortify every new client sale we make. Welcome to another edition of Drone Business Strategy Magazine Podcast. I'm Tony, you know who you are, and today we're embarking on a journey into the world of drone service sales strategy where we'll uncover the secrets to not only boosting your profitability, but also reducing risks in your commercial drone operations. Whether you're a seasoned commercial drone pilot with years of experience under your belt or someone who's just taking their first steps into the thrilling realm of drone entrepreneurship, this episode is designed to provide you with the tools and knowledge to thrive in this dynamic industry. So in a fast-paced and ever-evolving field that we are in, brothers and sisters, drone technology, we find success is not just about flying high and capturing breathtaking aerial shots, is it? It's about implementing a comprehensive strategy that ensures our business continues to soar to new heights while minimizing potential pitfalls along the way. So today, I'm going to equip you with some insights and tactics necessary, I believe, to streamline your client onboarding process and communicate with potential clients effectively just like I do, just like we do here at Aerial Northwest, all right? As a commercial drone pilot, our success hinges on more than just our flying skills, right? It's about our ability to navigate the intricate landscape of client acquisition and retention. It's about making informed decisions that lead to increased profitability while safeguarding our operations against unforeseen risks. So thanks for joining me today as we explore how to achieve these twin goals, which are maximizing profit and minimizing risk in the exciting world of the drone business industry we are in. But before we get going, let me just say this. If you're already, if you already got a process in place that works best for your unique drone business model, great. This session today may render a new idea for your aerial agency, so stick around. And if you're new to the business strategy, well, then my goal here is to help you inspire you and to help you do your business more cost effectively, cost effectively, more efficiently, and more risk reduced. So one of the things I like to do relative to business strategy is fail fast. It's called the fail fast approach. Anyway, that's what I call it. In the world of drone business, time is money, right? But we can't afford to waste resources on individuals who aren't genuinely interested in our services. We need to distinguish between serious clients and those who are simply curious or potentially fraudulent. You know, the looky-loos, the tire kickers, the rubber neckers. We have to be able to separate reality from fantasy as fast as we can. All right. And we also want to create a paper trail along the way. This really deals with the risk side of things. Picture this scenario. A drone operator goes awry, okay, or the operation goes south, and the drone operator finds himself facing legal consequences. So to protect our interests, it's crucial to maintain a comprehensive record of every step in our onboarding and flight mission process. Every step. Think of it as a risk mitigation strategy that could potentially save us from costly disputes down the road. I assume that everything I'm going to do in business is going to wind up in front of a judge. That being said, I make sure that all my T's are crossed and I's are dotted. If anything's out of alignment, I ain't flying. The end. You can do it your way, but I, I just, I will not deviate because the business I save may be my own. So let's talk about the email onboarding request. 
What is that? And in a few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate the exact document we use when onboarding our clients, step by step. So, to kickstart your onboarding process, I recommend a simple and logical approach to using email. This method serves several purposes. It helps gauge the sincerity of your client's request. It establishes a verifiable paper trail for your records. And it also fosters a professional relationship with your prospective client. Okay. So what are the benefits of email communication? Well, email is universally understood. It's a digital format that pretty much everybody knows how to use. And this minimizes obstacles to closing a deal. You don't want to put impediments in front of people, right? You want it to be a streamlined process so that nothing hiccups as you're trying to close the sale to win the deal. It also leaves a digital footprint too, enhancing transparency between you and your potential client, which is invaluable for record keeping and accountability. You can use an onboard document. You can use a form online as opposed to an email. If it works, it works. I like email because it's just very direct, very, and it's a little more personal, more one-to-one if you get my, my drift. I even like to make a phone call ahead of the email. So if, in some cases, when the prospect provides their phone number, I I give them a call. We call them. It helps establish a personal rapport, and it also verifies or helps to verify the uh, authenticity of the prospect. Um, It helps us understand the prospect's needs and intentions, achieve a goal, solve a problem, satisfy a need, right? That's what we do. We need to know what the need, goal, or problem is before we can solve it or we can address it, right? So this helps us get there a little quicker. And it informs them about the forthcoming email onboarding request that you're going to send them, which is the schema that I'm about to show you right now. When crafting your onboarding email, follow this template schema for clarity and professionalism. Okay. So there it is. This is the email that we use when we make that first response after the prospect has reached out to our agency, either by email, through a form, phone call. This is our response right out of the gate. Let me explain it to you step by step. It looks on the front end like a basic email, doesn't it? There's more than meets the eye. Uh Uh-huh, look at that. 12 bullets. We're going to talk about what each one of these bullets represents and why they're important. Remember, we're cognitive flyers. We're always protecting our business. We're making sure that we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Okay? The reputation for our own business we save may be our own. Oh, by the way, say hello to Willie. Willie's joining us uh, for the uh, segment today on the program. See how interested he is. Great, a great uh, little visual observer, great eyes, and certainly super good nose. Do we even use our noses when we're flying drones? I guess we could. If we smelled something funny, we probably shouldn't fly there. All right. But anyway, I digress. All right. So back to our email. Number one, we take a look at the top. That's the subject line. We make it personal. Hello, Phil. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Doug, in this case. And we tell them what it is. Regarding aerial photography project information onboarding request. So when they see this sitting in their email inbox, they're going to go, oh, look, it's from Aerial Northwest, and it's about this, and I need to get to it, right? It's going to stand out. We want this to look very professional and very personal. We don't want it to look salesy. Okay, even the words we use, request, onboarding request, aerial photography, that's why the person got a hold of us in the first place. So it's going to jar their memory and set this email apart from others that may be sitting within their email inbox the next time they check it. Number two is the vanity email address. Big boo-boo for some new drone pilots is they will use a Gmail address. Nothing wrong with a Gmail address, but it doesn't really scream credibility. It doesn't really expound on the concept that you're really serious about what you do because you don't have a vanity web address, email address. If you're Bob's Drones, then it should be Bob's Drones, at Bob's Drones. That should be your domain.com. 
If you're Kathy Zerial Services, it should, should be kathyzerialservices.com. That's part of your vanity, okay? Rather than just using a Gmail or a Yahoo account. Now, next, let's take a look at three, and that's the warm and personal opening salutation. Happy Friday afternoon. Now you're putting a time stamp on this thing, okay? For you and for the prospect. Happy Friday afternoon. Happy Tuesday morning, Mike. Put their name in there. Get their name. People love to see their name. You know that, right? We love to hear our names. Unless we're in trouble, then we don't want to hear our name. So that's number three. Number four, take a look at this. You'll notice when you look up here at the email address, you'll see Doug's in there, and then there's a BCC. I always require that we always send a blind CC back to us. So BCC means I'm sending a copy of that email that I'm sending to the prospect to us as a record, but they don't see that I'm sending the blind CC. Capiche, you get it? You understand? Okay. So they don't know about the blind CC. That's for our own records. So we have a timestamp. All right. Step by step. Now, number number five is where we get into that first opening sentence. I want to express my excitement about your decision to choose our services for your upcoming aerial flight. I'm assuming that they've already selected us and we're it just by what I said. I'm expressing my excitement, my enthusiasm. This means something to us. And your decision to choose our services for your upcoming flight, like we've already closed the deal, in order to assist you in the most accurate and safe manner possible. So not only are we just saying assist you and leaving it there, we're saying the most accurate because who doesn't want accurate and safe? I kindly request that you reply to this email and provide the following information. So now I'm giving them a call. I'm calling to action there. I'm giving them an actionable, something to do, and I'm keeping it simple. It's one sentence, okay? There's a sentence and a half in there, but that's it. So I'm not droning on, no pun intended. All right, let's look at number six. We need this information. It's the flight information. Where's the property? How can we do our due diligence if we don't know where we're flying? And if the person's a con artist trying to get a hold of us and trying to spoof us, well, they're probably going to give us a silly address. And then through our due diligence, we're going to determine the guys or the girls, you know, taking us down a, an ugly path. Okay. So let's look at desired flight date. We need to know when that is. Is it in an hour, in two days, in two weeks, or two years? And then what's the, what's the synopsis for the flight? What do you want us to do, Mr. and Mrs. Client? What do you want us to do here for you? Look at number seven now. That's the invoicing and legal details. We need to know those that information. Who are we going to bill? How are we going to confirm that the person is who they say they are? The business is who it says it is. We don't want to be flying for some nefarious maniac out there. Okay, we've got to be responsible and know who we're flying for within reason. Okay? So here we want to get the full name, the address, the name of the best contact person. If that owner's not going to be there, or the person signing the contracts, who else is going to be there in lieu of them? Then you've got their email address. And you notice I put best email address and best phone number. Psychologically, letting them know that we want to make sure we can get a hold of you when we, when we need to get a hold of you. All right, number eight. Once I receive your response, see, step by step by step, I will proceed with all necessary flight planning, equipment arrangements, and scheduling based on our defined uh, scope, your, your defined scope of work as provided. Moreover, I will prepare the project agreement for your review and approval. So now it says, here's what's next, right? Here's what you can expect, Mr. and Mrs. Client. And then number nine is, you know, your pilot contact information. Give them a telephone number. Don't be hiding. We don't want to put any impediments in the way. Don't put rocks in the way. Have a nice red carpet for them to your front door. Don't put things in the way. Make it simple. That's why we could use a form online to do all this onboarding. But people are far more comfortable with communicating by email. There's less that can go wrong here. And it gives you a great footprint, a great paper trail, right, for your record keeping. Let's look at number 10. That's friendly and personal closing salutation. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Most graciously, Tony. I'm grateful. I'm very grace, gracious and grateful that they're, they're, they're calling upon us to, to serve them. I want them to know that. 
then I've got my title down below. An FAA certified SUAS pilot, lending some credibility there. And then we add more credibility and branding and identification down below here in number 11, because there's the logo, there's the company name, there's all of our contact information, as transparent as you can be. Even the link here to the website, right? And then finally, number 12, that's the privacy legalese. This is confidential between us and you, Mr. and Mrs. Client, right? So now you're adding a layer of security, which makes people feel more comfortable and it reduces that risk of them going somewhere else. Now, a lot of times before I actually send this out, as I mentioned earlier, that I will call them on the phone before I even send this out, just to see if the phone number is legit, if the person's really there. And then I let them know on that phone call, hello, how you doing? And I get to know a little bit about their flight. They still get this document because I still want the paper trail. And I may even tell them that during the phone call. I'm going to send this to you so we have a solid paper trail between the two of us. Because think about it. We're flying under the certification of the Federal Aviation Administration. I mean, it's think about that. The FAA. So this is legitimate and this is very serious. And so we want to make sure we have everything in order up to and touching. Okay. And I've never had pushback unless it was somebody that was coming to us for a service that was on, uh, in a more of a nefarious approach, if you know what I mean. Okay, so there you have it. There's the overview, and please feel free to help yourself to the document. I'm going to create a white paper that will be placed below this video. You can just go directly over and pull this template down. Use it any way you want. Change it little, change it a lot, plug it in, play it into what you're already doing but I want to make it available to you. I hope this has helped you to understand the schema, to understand the concept of communicating and protecting yourself at the same time. The process we adopt and use is the process that will either propel our drone business forward or drive it into the dirt. Let's always be one step ahead. If you feel you've gotten value from our session today, please click the like button. If you'd like to stay in the loop, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Please be sure to leave any questions or comments you may have below. I read everything and respond accordingly to any and all of my fellow drone cohorts. Thank you so much for making the time today. Much respect, gratitude, and love. I'll see you soon. Fly safe. And that's a wrap for today's high-flying wisdom on the Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. Pre-planned for ambitious drone pilots like you. As we tie down another session of seamlessly blending street smart strategies with scholarly insights to empower and inspire your professional aerial ambitions, remember, your journey is your destination. For more drone business strategy information and valuable resources, be sure to explore aerialnorthwest.com. Stay tuned for more aerial adventures and strategic brilliance exclusively on the Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. Until next time, keep those dreams flying high.